Shalom, 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 family. Shalom. All praises to Yahweh by Shiva Mashiach Yahushai. Kwame Ashala, we still got next. Hallelujah. Bring it out. HOI pull up, boys. HOI to the chariots fly. Um, all the camps that are sincerity and truth. And Yahweh and Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the four corners of the earth. Not just HOI, all the sincere camps and congregations out there that are truthfully and righteously seeking the most high. And a Mashiach Yahavashai by Shema Mashiach Yahavashai. So, uh, welcome to this quick live video. Try not to be on here too long. Shalom, family. Um, today, we're going to talk about the second annual. Salakia, the second annual. Pre Passover purge fast. PPP fast, not PPP loan. Like during COVID, Shalom, everybody. PPP fast, all right? Pre Passover purge fast. This is our second annual. The Spirit uh, came on me and a sister actually last year. Well, a lot of years, me personally, I would fast um, before the Passover, but last year, you know, a sister in HOI, and I was already thinking it. And the spirit came on her and she reached out to me and she said, uh, Elder, we should call a fast, uh, a camp fast or a nationwide fast. Um, whoever wants to join in can join in. Feel free. All right. Uh, HOI, we're not saying we're the vanguards of Israel and, you know, y'all got to follow us. But uh, if you would like to join in, any believing Israelite in Yahweh Shai, feel free to join in. Um, if you, especially if you're keeping a Passover on the same date as us, or if you just want to join in for the fast period, you can join in for the fast. But the spirit came on us and said, Hey, let's do a fast before Passover last year. And I was just making a joke, like a pre Passover purge fast. Like, um, Esau had the PPP loan during COVID. So like, yeah, no folly, um, Take a sip of my latte. Keep me percolated. But anyway, Israel, that's what we're getting into today. We try not to be on here too long, but, you know, we always say that. But anyway, before I get started, once again, Israel, I'm going to keep reminding y'all, get y'all calendars, put in y'all orders for y'all 2024, HOI 2024, High Holy Day and Feast Day calendar. They still available. We're only about a third into the year. We got plenty more months. You got April all the way to December. Um, you can still get your uh, HOI official feast day 2024. This is April right here. Feast of Unleavened Bread. You see all the images of the, for the past over there. All right. Um, kind of looks like the movie, The Book of Clarence, right? <laughs> All the black gem images of Yahweh Shai and the disciples. That's the month of April that we're in right now in 2024. You can still put in your order for your calendars and you get a discount because a third of the year is already gone. We're already in the fourth month. It's 12 months. That's a third of the year if you went to math class. So get your still order today. You have a, a discount. They're discounted because of the, you know, we, we, um, Four months into the year, but you still got the other eight months of the year for your calendar. Get your calendars ASAP. Put in your order. I just got a fresh batch, so I got plenty in stock. So order your calendars today. Go to House of Israel NYC at gmail.com. House of Israel NYC, like New York City, at gmail.com. Or inbox me here on Facebook, Kanai Zabak. Or Instagram, Kanai Zabak. All right, that's your 2024 HOI feast day and high holy day calendar. The month of April with all the images of the Passover right there. All right, so uh, email me or inbox me and order your calendars today. All right, you got the front there with a, a, a Colin Kaepernick type afro showing um, Yahweh Shai with the um, sheep. These are, this is your glossary of feast day greetings. How to say it in the English and the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. 
All right, and then that's the crown with the last page, Kwame Shala. All right, I ain't showing y'all uh, May through December, goddamn it. You got to purchase the calendar. Nah, but anyway, no folly. Shalom family to everybody that's on here. So today we're going to talk about um, the second annual pre-Passover purge fast. To purge out the leaven out of your spirit, your mind. And, you know, some of you can even do a bodily purge. Like, you know, they got herbs and stuff where you can do a purge. You know, or you can do a purge like after Passover. Because, you know, you eat all the lamb and the red meat, different stuff, whatever. You know, you can do a purge maybe after. Um, but that's what we're dealing with today. No, I'm not talking about the death of OJ. We, uh, we talked about that in camp last night. We're not, I'm not talking about the eclipse, all right? We, we, we went into all the current events last night in camp. The, uh, the video, Shalom, Cindy, the video is up on HRLA. So if y'all want all the current events and the sensationalism, it's on HOR Los Angeles. We went into it at camp in Hollywood last night. But today is the, the focus. We got a week left. We at crunch time. We are literally at crunch time right now. Shalom, everybody. Shalom, Cindy. Shalom, Daniela. Um, Shalom, everybody that's coming on. Um, we got a week left till Passover, so it's crunch time. It's crunch time for those that are on the same calendar as HOI. We know it's Passover season, so you've seen Passovers with different camps all over the place. So now, as of a week from today, next Sunday... At even is the Lord's Passover. We got a week. We're in the final hour. So before the Passover comes in, all right, at the sound of my voice, I'm asking everyone, HOI, everyone of the body of HOI, everyone that follows HOI, you may not be a, a member or you may not be rank and file. You may not be part of the body. You haven't made an official uh, commitment, but shout out to everybody. If y'all would like to join in, and anybody in the nation, right, would like to join in with this pre-Passover purge fast, this Wednesday, April 17th at even, until Thursday, April 18th at even. All right, join us for this one-day fast. It's a dry fast. No food, no drink, no water, nothing. No juice, nothing. 24-hour total abstinence from everything. It's a dry fast. All right, so the Passover is coming up. Let's start with that. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. So we know we got to keep the feast next Sunday at even. Um, if you're not able to make it, you still got to keep the feast in your home. All right, no excuse. All right, Exodus chapter 12. And um, I'm going to just get right to the point. Exodus chapter 12 and verse 8. As of next Sunday night, we are going to eat the Passover, right? Exodus 12 and 8. And they shall eat the flesh in that night. The flesh means the flesh of the lamb. So anybody that, if you're not able to make it, if you're able to make it to the Passover, it's your first time, we're going to walk you through it, right? There with us. But if you're not able to make it, you get lamb. You go out and you get some lamb, enough for you to eat, your family to eat, whoever's going to keep the Passover with you. Right, you get enough for yourself, maybe two, three portions or whoever's. You get lamb, you can get chops. We're supposed to get a whole lamb, but you know, if you're keeping a Passover in your house, let's say it's just you or just you and your family, you don't need a whole lamb. A whole lamb feeds like 50, 60 people. But you get enough lamb for you and your uh, family to eat for that night. You roast the lamb with fire on a grill. All right, you're supposed to roast the lamb with fire on a grill or like an open pit rotisserie. All right, you're supposed to roast the uh, lamb like that. Uh, Exodus 12 and 8 again, and they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is bread without yeast in it. It's what the so-called white Jews call in the modern Hebrew, matzos. Or we say matzah in the ancient Hebrew. It means unleavened bread. So you go to the supermarket, we got, there's recipes online you can look up where they got different Hebrew Israelite sisters that give you recipes on how to make your own unleavened bread. For those of y'all that's like, I'm not buying a, the so-called white Jews uh, matzah crackers, 
They got children's blood in it. Okay, fine. They have read. You can type in how to make unleavened bread for the Passover on YouTube. There's tons of videos out there. Shalom, Nathan. You should be at the Passover too, Ak. It's right in Philly. Nathan, you should be at the Passover this year also, King. Um, so that's, you get your lamb. Then you get your unleavened bread, which is bread without yeast. The so-called white Jews call it matzah. If you don't have time to learn how to make the bread, you can go to Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, one of the better markets, and get you some organic whole wheat. Um, organic whole wheat, um, unleavened bread, matzah, or whatever the case may be. That's your unleavened bread. For those of y'all that are hyper righteous and I'm not eating a white man's matzah, they got recipes online how to make your own bread. Look it up on YouTube how to make unleavened bread for the Passover, right? Yeah, there's more spiritual that you make your own, but I'm saying for those that may not have time, they might be scared. You know, I don't, I'm not going, I don't want to make my own bread because it might come out too watery. I don't know. Your other option, just so you, right, just so you don't um, contrast, contrast, all right, <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for, it's a lot here. Just so you don't contrast with the Passover, right, just so you don't contrast with the Passover, I mean, you don't you don't um, contrast and not keep the Passover. Just do the unleavened bread. You pray over it, you'll be fine. I've I've eaten Amalek's matzahs over the years, and I'm fine. I, the matzahs didn't kill me. The children's blood didn't get in my system and contaminate me. Pray over it, and you'll be fine, right? Um, and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Bitter herbs. Yeah, tortillas is uh that's flatbread also. That's bread without yeast. All right, tortillas, you can use that as an alternative also, but just make sure they don't have yeast in them. All right, um, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. Bitter herbs is horseradish. I'm not talking about no damn cilantro or, or um, a romaine lettuce. No, because that stuff ain't really bitter. The proper bitter herb is horseradish. That's the real bitter herb. You get horseradish root. From the produce market and you cut it up into pieces and you're going to eat that with your lamb and your unleavened bread all right um i don't know about no hot water cornbread brother i, I don't i know nothing about that if hot water cornbread don't have yeast in it knock yourself out but we're not really dealing with cornbread you're dealing with flour regular you know the regular uh, unleavened bread recipe all right so um but i don't know if you know Y'all have knowledge of hot water cornbread. I have no idea. I have no knowledge of no hot water cornbread. Um, but anyway, <laughs> not for nothing, brother. But I've heard of hot water cornbread, but whatever. If it's flatbread with no yeast, fine. Um, it says, eat not of it raw. You're going to roast your lamb well done. Nor sotten at all with water. You're not supposed to stew the lamb. All right. But roast with fire. You're supposed to rotisserie it or put it on the grill. His head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. That's for larger households. Shalom. Uh, Hana, all praise to the Most High for letting you see another year. Um, his legs with the pertinence thereof, meaning the whole body of the lamb is supposed to be roasted, but that's for a larger family or the congregation. If you have a smaller family or it's just you by yourself, go get you a couple of lamb chops, call it a day. However much lamb you can eat for that night, all right? Uh, don't get too much because all the lamb's supposed to be eaten up in that night. Any that's remaining, you're supposed to burn it. It's supposed to be gone before the morning. We're going to explain all that during the Passover ceremony. But right now, all I'm doing is getting to the fact that we got to eat the Passover next Sunday night at even. April 21st when the sun goes down. Of course, we pray first. We go over the scriptures. We read the story of the Passover. We explain we explain what the Passover is all about, and then we go from there. All right, Khan? But now, all right, I want to get that out of the way. Any more questions or details y'all need to know about the Passover, email me at houseofisraelnyc at gmail.com. Go to YouTube. You can type in HOI Passover, 
HOI, how to keep the Passover. We got videos, tons of videos from the past years that we did on uh, how to keep the Passover. The actual Passover ceremony, last year's Passover, the whole ceremony is still up on YouTube. Type it in HOI Passover, House of Israel Passover. All right, we got we got plethora of videos that'll come up, and you can watch, you can binge watch them videos all week to give you uh, an understanding of what the Passover to get a you know, understand what the Passover is about. But, Shalom, wise man Daniel in the building. Shalom. Shalom, you're tired. Uh, Shalom, everybody else that's coming in. There's too many names to say, goddammit. I'm just seeing a few. <laughs> Salakia, no folly. But listen, um, today, what we're talking about, though, is preparation for the Passover, getting your mind, your spirit, your household, and even your body right before the Passover comes in. Con, give me a con triple seven. And um, if y'all understand, uh, we talking about the Passover purge, brother, but um, inbox me. I can, um, I can connect you to somebody in Florida. Most I will. Not, may not necessarily be in the Orlando area, but we got brothers down there. Um, so, today we're going to talk about getting your spirit and your mind right. Because you don't want to eat the Passover in the wrong spirit. So it's good to go on a fast and meditate, pray, ask for forgiveness. It's a new year, you know. You know, uh, say to the most, I'm going to try to do better this year. I'm going to try to improve. I'm going to try to step up my game. Everything. Okay? So, um, where I'm at, where I'm at, where I'm at, Salakia. Um, Salakia. Um, so, we're going to go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Let's start there. We're going to 1 first, first Corinthians 11. All right, so it's good to go on a fast to purge your spirit. Like you purge the leaven out of your households during this week. You got to clean out your household. Get all the um, foods that have leaven in them. Leaven is yeast. Or anything that's a leavening agent, anything dealing with leaven, look on your ingredients of your foods, eat them up, or either throw them out. And clean your house thoroughly, all right, because you can have little breadcrumbs or whatever in the corner. There's leaven in your house. So clean your house. And now you got to cleanse your spirit and try to cleanse your body before you go into the Passover. All right? Even, like I said, even after the Passover, because you eat a lot of lamb, red meat, whatever, during Passover. You know, sometimes during Passover, I might eat lamb two, three days out of the week. It's only on the right? You know, um, it's only required on the first day. But hey, anyway, you can do a, you can do a cleanse after the Passover, too. That's good too. Either either one before, after you can do it both, whatever. But we're calling for this fast this Wednesday, April 17th, 2024 at even pre-Passover purge fast um 2024. All right. Why is it important to purge and get your mind to fast purge and get your mind and spirit right? Right? Because you want to go into the Passover with a good conscience, with a clear conscience, keeping the feast to the Most High. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, meaning the unleavened bread at Passover, and drink this cup of the Lord, meaning the wine or the grape juice for those that um, don't drink. All right. And the wine and the grape juice is symbolic. It's not a blood ritual that we're doing. It's symbolic to Yahushua's blood. All right, it says, um, unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Because the um, unleavened bread, that represents Yahweh Shai's body, Christ's body. The wine represents his blood. Because what he sacrificed, he gave himself, he gave his body as a sacrifice, and he shed his blood for the remission of sins of the children of Israel. So it's all symbolic. We're not, well, it's not cannibalism. Like some of you try to say, some of you are simple as hell. It's uh, it's a comparison. 
right? It's comparison. It symbolizes. It's symbolism. It's not, you know, we actually eating a piece of Christ's um, arm and we drinking some of his blood. No, it's symbolic. It represents him giving his body and blood for the sacrifice and remission of sins to, uh, for the children of Israel. All right, 28. But let a man examine himself. So this week is about examining yourself and getting in that fast and say, hey, am I right going into this Passover? And that's between you and the Most High. Y'all know what you did. You know your secrets. You know whatever. All right? If, and let me say this, nobody else can determine your righteousness. Israel is always so holier than that. Oh, you ain't worthy, the brother, to keep the Passover because you, 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 uh, you put quarters in your meter on the, in the car on the Sabbath. No, Israel be simple and self-righteous over and hyper-righteous sometimes. A lot of y'all Hebrews, not all of y'all, but a lot of y'all, you always trying to determine somebody else's righteousness. And you probably got all kinds of damn skeletons in your closet. So let that between you and the most be between you and the most high. If you know you're doing the best that you can to your ability and you feel, Lord, I'm worthy and I'm, and I'm ready to eat this Passover, then that's it. If you're not, the most high will show you and he will make you correct yourself. We, we deal with a merciful power. But don't let some simple Negro that got 500 bones in his damn closet tell you, you, you paid the, the car meter on the Sabbath, so you broke the law. If I didn't pay the car meter, dummy, my car would have got towed. And I'm at camp, so I'm doing a lawful, I'm doing a righteous thing on the Sabbath. You spent money on a Shabbat, though. That's buying and selling. So if I'm, I'm just, I'm being uh, sarcastic, Israel, but... Don't let these hyper over these hyper righteous Israelites judge your righteousness. That's what I'm saying. If you feel in your spirit that you trying to do right in the most high to the best of your ability, then you fast, you get your mind and your spirit right, and you keep the feast. Believe you me, if you ain't right, the most high will show you and he'll get you right. All right, I'm um, reading on. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Examine yourself. Now, if you know you've been going the hell off, and your spirit ain't right, maybe like, nah, I'm, gonna sit, I'm not gonna keep the Passover. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get my mind right, or keep the Passover in the spirit of I'm gonna do better. I know I'm gonna fix myself, so I'm gonna eat this Passover because I'm sincere. I want to show the Lord I'm sincere. And I'm going to work on building myself up and get my spirit right for the rest of the year. But if you know you wicked as hell two days before the Passover, then maybe you should sit it out and get your mind and spirit right. And you could do the makeup Passover the next month. Remember, the Most High allow us to make the Passover up in the second month. Or you just wait for next year. Next year, well, Lord forbid we're not here. Chariots come before them. But next year, you know what? I've been working on my spirit all year. I've been trying to do the right thing. I've been trying to get better with the Most High. I think I'm ready to keep the Passover this year. Good. Shalom, Azariah. Um, verse 29. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, he that eat the Passover unleavened bread and drinketh the uh, wine or grape juice, if you don't drink, unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. You don't care about the sacrifice that Yahweh Shah made and the symbolism of the Passover to Yahweh Shah's body and sacrifice and blood. You're just a wicked Negro that want to eat some lamb and drink some wine. Like Paul said in Hebrews, it's like you put Yahweh Shah back on the cross a second time. So if you're going into this Passover, that's why we call him for this fast. Go into it with the right mind and spirit. All right. Uh, verse 30. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Many are, are weak, you have ailments, you're sick, you have different diseases, and you sleep. There's, a, there's death. There's death within Israel. There's people in the truth that lose family members and different things. There's people that's, uh, you know, near death. You know, so why is this happening? Because the spirit, Paul is saying the spirit is not right going into the Passover, so these curses still remain amongst us. The more we get sincere and get our spirit and mind right, the Lord will lift the curses off. He'll start healing us of our, our ailments. He'll start healing us, healing us of our sicknesses. We will have, um, 
We can damn near go from near death. I just recently heard of three three stories. Three is completion, right? Um, like they said, death come in threes. I've just heard of like three stories back to back of brothers and sisters. I think two brothers and a sister that had life threatening diseases and they were healed by Shema Mashiach Yamashai because of the prayers, herbs, fasting. And trying to get the spirit right. And these people are disease free and healthy. Where they had terminal and life threatening illnesses. So that's this scripture right here coming into effect. 1 Corinthians 11 and 30. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. Because the spirit is not right and the law is not being kept properly. There's a lot of weakness, sickness and death amongst us as a people. But if the law is being kept, you pray and meditate and fast then. Trying to keep these laws to the best of your ability, doing the work, the most I can heal you and lift the sicknesses off, off of you. All right, I'm reading on. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. What is Paul saying? If you would look at yourself and judge yourself, if you would make sure your mind and your spirit is right and correct, then nobody else would have to nobody else would have to check you. Because you're checking yourself. If everybody understands, give me a con triple seven. If you checking yourself and staying on yourself, nobody else got to check you. Like, nah, bro, I'm not doing it. And if they do try to make an accusation or go to check, not as a false accusation, I'm not doing that. That's not me. I, I'm, I'm on myself. That's why Paul said in verse 28, but let a man examine himself. So if you checking yourself, ain't nobody really got to check you. If they go to try to check you, it's false because you checking yourself. You already making sure you moving right. Okay? All right, so um, 32. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. In other words, what Paul is saying, check that out. Paul is saying when the most I spank you, that's to get you right. So you don't be a damn reprobate, an outcast, a throwaway with the rest of the world. Because what happens if you continue in your wickedness, the most I'm going to cast you out and you're going to be like the rest of the world. You're going to be condemned. But when he spank you, that's for you to get it right. When you pat your child and say, hey, don't touch that hot oven. They know I ain't going to do that again. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same way the most I do. We are his children. So he spanks us when we misbehave. So we don't keep misbehaving and then we're condemned. Then he like, there's no repentance for you. You're not changing. I got to put you to death. Or I got to cash you out. All right. So reading on, it says, um, wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Look out for one another. All right. It says, um, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Meaning the Passover, if you come in to eat of the Passover, is about coming in the right spirit. It's not really about the food and the drink. Even though we engage in the food or the drink, it's about the spirit. And make sure you're coming there in the right spirit, because if you're not coming to the Passover in the right spirit, it's like you're just coming there to eat and drink. All right, Khan? And that's not hard to understand. That's basic. Uh, reading on. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. The most I was like, man, it's just a bunch of Negroes in here that want to eat some lamb and drink some wine. Y'all ain't sincere. The most I will condemn that, that, that on Passover. So let's make sure we try to be in the right spirit. That's why anyone this Wednesday, you can join us with for a pre-purge Passover fast, PPP fast. <laughs> All right. And the rest will I set in order when I come. But Paul was saying, I'll give you all more instruction and wisdom and guidance when I visit y'all. All right. So that was 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-seven through 34. Y'all can actually start at 17. It actually starts at 17, um, all the way down to 34, but I just want to get to the main point. I read 27 through 34. Everybody understand? Give me a con triple seven. I believe that's basically self-explanatory with the understanding that I gave with it. All right. Now from there, go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 6 now. Um, go back. Go to 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. All right. Now. As we go into the Passover, you want to eat the Passover in the right spirit. Brother Ray White, where you been at? 
Have you been on that blue chariot that was over South Philly? No, I'm just kidding. No folly. The Passover is April 21st, brother. It's been announced many times, but maybe you didn't hear it. And let me say this. I'm not getting on you, brother, but this is just an, this is a tough love and encouragement. We are a week away from the Passover. Everybody should know when the Passover is. You should be keeping up with the calendar. If you don't see the calendar, whatever, ask questions. I know you're asking now, but we should know when a feast day is coming up at least a month in advance. Right? You, you shouldn't be. That's not good, Israel. All right? You're a week from the Passover and don't know when the Passover is. And that's, uh, you know, I'm not getting on you, Brother Ray White. That's, that's tough love. All right? No disrespect, brother. I'm not trying to put you on blast or make you feel no kind of way. But it's encouragement. When we know better, let's do better. All right? 1 Corinthians 5 and 6. Your glorying is not good because when you read 1 Corinthians verses uh, chapter 5, verse 1 through 5, Paul was talking about wickedness in the Corinthian church. One of the high levels of wickedness was men sleeping with their stepmothers. All right, they were sleeping with their father's wives, which is adultery and is incest because you're like sleeping with one that's nearest of kin. Even though they're near of kin by they're near of kin by marriage, but that's still near of kin. All right, so you don't do that. Israel, you know, control your lust, man. Right? Uh, Paul said it's better to marry than to burn. If you lust, then just go get a wife. Wife, uh, wife if you lust, then go get a husband. Now, I'm not saying just grab anybody to fulfill your sexual desires. No, but, you know, learn them, prove them. In other words, Paul is saying... To avoid any kind of sexual misconduct, get a spouse. This way you can have sex with them and fulfill your needs and your lusts. Right? Why you got to sleep with your damn father's wife? Why you got to sleep with your stepmother? What kind of madness is that? Shalom, Yaquim. But that was going on in the church in Corinth. So verses 1 through 5, Paul is telling the Israelite churches in Corinth, Y'all going off doing this deed and y'all not checking the people that's doing it. Y'all know this is going on in the body and y'all not dealing with it. So now he says, your glory and it's not good. Yo, 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 you know, I was, yo, I was with, um, I was with my stepmoms last night, man. I hit that last night. You know what I'm saying? My father's out of town. I just went over there. That's wicked and evil as hell, man. But Paul said, your glory and it's not good. They were glorying. That this sin was going on in the church of Corinth. Israel is wicked as hell. That's why there's nothing new under the sun. Y'all can't. Now, when you come into this truth, you're going to see wickedness in the truth. You're going to see wickedness in this nation. And it's nothing different. It was going on back then. And they knew they was Israel back then and keeping the commandments. But they were sleeping with their mothers, their fathers' wives, their stepmother. It wasn't their mother because uh, the way Paul said it, he said fathers' wives. Let me just read it. 1 Corinthians 5 and 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. That one should have his father's wife. See, if it was, uh, if it was his mother, would have just said one would have had his mother. His father's wife have to be his stepmother. Meaning uh, probably a second wife or maybe... Maybe he's divorced from uh, the your your mother, or it's a second wife. He's a, in polygyny, or your mother passed on. But it's a it's a wife outside of your mother. That's why it's written that way. You're sleeping with your father's wife. You're sleeping with your stepmother. And this was going on in the church of Corinth. Israel was wicked as hell, right? And we have we have we have uh, stuff going on. I don't, uh, Lord. Forbid that's going on in any Israelite camp today, but there's form, there's sin going on amongst the body that needs to be corrected. So again, I just want to get to the point, but I had to set it up. Five and six, your glorying is not good. You should never glory in sin, especially certain levels of sin, any sin. But you're going to brag to somebody that you you hit up your uh, your, your stepmother? That's wicked as hell. You're not even supposed to have a sexual desire to somebody that's near of kin. You see a, 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 a woman in the street, oh, she's beautiful. You're not even supposed to have lustful sexual thoughts about her because that's not your wife. And you don't know if she's married or nothing. You know? 
But to avoid this fornication, Paul said, just get a spouse. Like I said, don't just grab anybody out there to have sex. But get a spouse so you can fulfill those desires. If you, hey, I'm going to take it there. Don't get offended, Israel, but it's scripture. If you're a man that have a big appetite, so to speak, then get more than one wife. Um, engage in polygyny, but do it the right way. And don't have three, four different wives just so you can have different coochie. Excuse me, we all grown here, but I'm going to take it there. In other words, it tells you in Apocrypha, don't just want your wife because of her beauty or her body or her looks or for the uh, pleasure of the flesh. But if you, if in your honest spirit, if you know you're a man that you, you desire more than one woman. Some of my elders, when I came in the truth, I was like, oh, a man can have more than one wife? They was like, yeah, brother. We have some raw elders coming up in Israel. Y'all have no idea. Y'all wouldn't last five minutes with these elders. They was rough, tough, and about this Israelite life. Some of my elders looked at me like I was crazy. Brother, what you talking about? I always had more than one woman, even before I came into the truth. And then they showed me the scripture. I was like, oh, okay, I didn't know that. And it was not necessarily for me to go out there and say, oh, I'm going to get me seven wives. No, I was just like, oh, okay. You know what? I know about Solomon and other men in the Bible, so yeah. But anyway, I say all that to say, back to the original point, I don't want to get off into a tangent. But I'm saying all that because to fulfill the lust so you don't do nothing that's sexually deviant. You don't have to go into porno and strip clubs and and uh, some brothers justify getting prostitutes or going to the brothel or the whorehouse. Or damn back page or whatever the hell. Right? So you can avoid all those sexual deviant behaviors. You get a wife. A wives, you get a husband. But this was going, this is in the Bible. They lust was getting to them so much, they were sleeping with their stepmothers. Right? Read on. It says, um, your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. So on this pre-Passover purge fast, we're getting a spiritual leaven out of our systems. Like the yeast in the actual bread, the leaven, the yeast that makes the bread rise, you're getting the leaven out of your spirit. You're getting the things out of your spirit that make you proud, puffed up. They had leaven in them here because they was proud about sleeping with their damn stepmother. And they was puffed up about it. You know, they were spiritually puffed up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know... uh, they even got that saying, I don't know what you swelling all up for. Or you, I don't know why you taking on all that hot air swelling up. Because what? Now a spirit of anger is coming on you. A spirit where you want to fight. Or a spirit where you want to curse somebody out. That's that leaven within. That's that spiritual leaven. All right. The pride, the ego, the sin, the wickedness, the evil thoughts. That's the leaven you got. That's the spiritual leaven. Like we take the physical leaven, the yeast out of the bread. And that the bread doesn't rise. It stays flat. You're supposed to get the leaven out of yourself that your spirit don't rise up in pride. If everybody understand the analogy, give me a con triple seven. All right, it says, uh, verse seven, 1 Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that you may be a new lump. So this is our true new year. We know at the Day of Atonement, we ask for forgiveness of sins, and we try to negate the past year. But at the beginning of the year is a good time to do it also. So start off the new year fresh with a new spirit, getting the leaven out of your spirit, all right? It says, purge out therefore the old leaven. What old leaven? The leaven from the past year, all right? And past years, anything from the past, look forward and purge it out and do better as you move forward. As ye are unleavened, for even Yahawashai, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So you got to remember the sacrifice that Yahawashai did for us. And you got to purge all that sin. And Yahawashai gave his life. He died to wash away our sins. Let's get that real quick. Revelation 1 and 5. So in keeping the Passover, you remember that Yahawashai died to cleanse our sins in his blood. Right? So you go into the Passover cleansing your mind and your sins and your spirit of wickedness and evil and sin. All right, Revelation 1 and 5. And from Yahweh Shai, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, 
unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. All right, so read uh, 1 Corinthians, the end of uh, uh, chapter 5, the end of verse 7. For even Yahweh Shai, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So just like we sacrificed the actual lamb on the, on the Passover, Yahweh Shai was sacrificed to cleanse our sins. So as we go into the eating of the Passover, understand that and cleanse your sins. That's what we call it for this fast, to give you a new start, to refresh, to meditate, pray, ask the Most High for forgiveness, and go into the Passover in the right spirit. Verse 8, therefore let us keep the feast, and the Passover is mandatory, right? If, you, if you've been trying and keeping the commandments to the best of your ability all year round, the Passover is mandatory, all right? Um... Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. That's how we got to keep the Passover, Salakia. So like, fix my Z on my headband, Salakia. So like, yeah. Um, right? We got to, uh, uh, let me read that again, Salakia. So Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Meaning what? Keep the feast in the right spirit. Notice Paul said, not with the, the leaven of malice and wickedness. See that? Having malice in you, envy, wickedness, that spiritual leaven within. And all that stuff, it, it puffs you up. All right? It makes you proud. And, and, and proud in a negative, evil way. All right? Shalom, Timothy, William, Shalom, law keepers, Shalom, everybody. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth, meaning if you keep in a Passover in the right spirit and sincerity and truth, I love Yahweh, I love Yahweh Shai, I love the nation of Israel, I'm trying to keep these laws, we all fall short. Uh, I'm going to get on you too, Northern St. Franklin, what day does Passover start? Passover starts April 21st at even. Y'all should know this stuff. We are a week away from Passover. Y'all should know this already. Y'all should be paying attention. You know, you should know the day of Passover months in advance. Hell, the, the year. Most I will, I can look up the new moons and determine a Passover date for the next year. And I'm not boasting and bragging, but we got to be better on point, y'all. It is a week before the Passover. You, sh you shouldn't be just asking when the Passover is. All right, that's not good. That means you're not really paying attention to your true feast days. All right? Read on. It says, uh, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Right? Uh, okay, now. All right, y'all get a pass. I'll go a little easy on y'all then. If y'all following different camps in Canada is okay. That's, that's a difference. But even if you're not following HOI's date, whatever date, whatever elders or camp or congregation you follow, know that date months in, in advance also. But if y'all just asking to see what date I would start, then, oh, Salakia, forgive me. Y'all just asking to see what our date start. But as long as you keep it, if you kept it in March, early, in, you know, I've seen about five or six different time periods of people keeping a Passover. It's all good. We in that season. I'm not judging nobody. You know, HOI, we don't do that. We don't puff our chests out. The pride level, we got the right date. Y'all all going off. No, nah, we don't do that. Whatever date you got between, right? Um, Whatever date you got between the different camp or elder you follow, follow that date. All right? So let's keep the Passover without the evil and wickedness within us, the leaven within us, the, un, the um, unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Let's keep it in the right spirit to the best of our ability. All right? Con, so we're going to get, um, we're just going to get real quick some different levels of purging, different layers, levels, and dynamics of purging. Just a few, a handful of scriptures about three or four. Showing different layers, um, levels, and dynamics of purging. All right? Go to um, Psalms 51 and 7. Let's go to Psalm 51 and 7. 
Yeah, so it's all love, Ak. <laughs> Tough love. <laughs> I get on Israel sometimes, but y'all know I love y'all. All right. But I'm going to get on y'all, damn it. Psalms 51 and 7. All right. Psalms 51 and 7. And it reads thus and so. It says, purge me with hyssop. Hyssop was an herb. Actually, when you read Exodus 12, the Most High told us to take the hyssop branch and put the blood of the hyssop, put the um, blood from the lamb that you slaughtered for your house on a branch of the hyssop and put the, um, the blood on the two side posts of your door and on the top post of your door. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Exodus 12. And um, let me see what I want. Exodus 12 and 22. All right, Exodus 12, 22. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, meaning a branch of hyssop, and dip it in the blood that is in the basin of blood that you drained from when you slaughtered the lamb. All right. And strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. Right? So it says strike the lintel, which is the top of the door, and the two side posts. Uh, we actually have that on the HOI feast day calendar. Um, the HOI feast day, high holy day calendar. See that right there? See that? That's the... You take the branch of the hyssop, the herb, the herb plant, the branch of the hyssop. You dip it in the uh, blood of the lamb that you slaughtered um, for your, you and your family for the Passover. And you strike it on a lintel and a two side and doorpost of your house. And that was that was to show the deaf angel, Yahawashai, that um, that was an Israelite. That was a commandment keeping Israelite obedient household. And none of, the, none of the firstborn in that household was to be killed. And remember, the Lord told Israel, um, don't even come out of your house that night. Because at 12 midnight, um, at night, Salakia, the deaf angel came over and smote all the firstborn of the Egyptians. All right. Oh, okay. What a pleasant surprise. Miss Torah is in the building. Shalom. All right. But anyway, um... So that was uh, Psalms 51 and 7 with Exodus 12, 22. All right. I just want to give you all a visual of uh, you took the hyssop. Now, hyssop, it was a cleansing herb. So the hyssop was a physical symbolism of the purging of that household, meaning you was obedient to the most high. And that household was purged from the plague of the death angel coming over to kill the firstborn of Egypt. Everybody understand? Give me a con triple seven. Seven. <laughs> so there's layers, levels, and different dynamics of the purging during the Passover season and purging in general. Yes, are you keeping this in the land? No, I'll be keeping it in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's the land. <laughs> right? Um... From there, Psalms 51 and 7, um, that was with Exodus uh, 12 and 22. Now, let's go to Psalm 79 and 9. See, the, Mo the Most High does everything in layers and dynamics. There's different layers and dynamics to everything the Most High do. So this is different levels, layers, and dynamics of the purging during the Passover season and purging in general. All right, Psalm 79 and 9. All right, this is Psalm 79 and 9. Uh, Help us, O Yahweh, our salvation, for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. See that? So the scriptures tell you um, uh, this Psalm of Asaph, he said, purge away our sins for your name's sake. Meaning the Most High, purge our sins, cleanse us for your name's sake, because your name is on us as your chosen people. So cleanse us so that we can be a righteous representation of you. 
So the earth could say, these are God's chosen people? Wow, they're keeping, a, they're showing righteousness and bringing forth fruitful works, proving that they are the people of the Most High. So we ask the Most High to purge us, meaning have mercy on us and forgive us of our sins so that we can properly represent him. Like, uh, it's like you go outside and, you, and your children are dirty. That's going to look bad on you. You got to cleanse, purge your children. Wash their face, hair, clothes, iron them. Make sure they clean, because that's a representation of you. You got to purge your children. Right? And purge their clothes. Wash their clothes. Iron them. Make them look neat and clean. Because that's a representation of you. So Asaph is saying, Lord, clean us up. So when we go outside, we represent our spiritual father. We represent our spiritual parent, right? Our father and our big brother. We represent our spiritual family members. The Most High in Yahawashai. Our father and our spiritual big brother, we represent you right. We're cleansing. All right, everybody understand? Give me a con triple seven. It shouldn't be hard to understand. These are different layers, levels, and dynamics of purging. All right? Now we're going to go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel. No, you know what? I'm going to say that for the latter end. Um, let's go to 2 Timothy. He cleansed us of... When Yahweh came, he cleansed us of our sins by what? By dying and giving his blood on the cross. Okay? So when that happened, yeah, I just put this headband together, Salakia. Um, so when that happened, it was supposed to clear our conscience. Our conscience was supposed to be cleared. Why? Because him dying for us was a representation of what? Him cleansing our sins before the Most High. He was that ultimate sin sacrifice, right? He was that ultimate sin sacrifice to uh, bring us back to the most high. So what happened? When he did that, our conscience is supposed to be purged. Our mind and spirit is supposed to be purged. Shalom on Salakia, somebody texted me. Our mind and conscience is supposed to be purged from sin and evil thoughts, right? So that's another level and layer of uh, um, purging, right? Because when Yahweh died for the entire nation, we supposed to know in our mind, listen, that was an ultimate sacrifice that he gave for the nation of Israel, an ultimate sacrifice he gave for us as his people, a ultimate sacrifice that he gave for us for eternal life. So in your mind, should you say to yourself, I'm going to cleanse myself from my dead works to serve the living power of Yahweh. Right? You're supposed to say that in your mind. I'm going to cleanse myself from the dead works, the sin, the evil, the wickedness. Your mind should be purged saying, I want to do the righteous works of the most high and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Go from dead works, which is sin and evil, unto the righteous works of keeping the most high in Yahweh shot. So Paul is saying something deep here. If your mind doesn't tell you, Shalom, if your mind doesn't tell you that, look, Yahweh shot died for our sins. Let me get my mind and my spirit right. If your mind don't tell you that, then you're not purging your conscience. Your conscience should get to you to where you say, listen, man, Yahweh Shah made the ultimate sacrifice for us. I want to keep these commandments and do the law and be righteous. Everybody understand? Kind? So there's different levels and dynamics of purging. We're going to go from there to, um, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 2. And 19. 2 Timothy 2. Oh, let me see what I want. Is it 19? 2 Timothy 2. Yeah, 19. We're going to start at 19. 
Or should I start at 8? No, no, 18 is going into something else. 2 Timothy 2 and 19, and it reads thus and so. Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh standeth sure, having this seal. Yahweh knoweth them that are his. Well, when you read uh, Revelation 7, 1 through 4, what did the Most High say through Yahweh Shai? He said, uh, seal those that are sealed, meaning you're in your mind, you have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Most High in Yahabashai. Those that are sealed in the mind, right? Revelation 7, 1 through 4. There was 12,000 out of each tribe that was sealed, right? The Lord knows those that are his. He knows his elect, all right? It says, um, the Lord know of them that are his, meaning they are sealed. And let everyone that nameth the name of Yahabashai depart from iniquity. Check that out. The Most High said, let everyone that nameth the name of Yahweh Shai depart from iniquity. All right, reading on. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Shalom, babe. Shalom, Daniela. All right, there's some vessels unto honor, some unto dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So if you cleanse yourself, if you cleanse yourself, then you are worthy to be a, a servant of the Most High. Yahweh If you purge yourself. You are worthy to be a servant of the Most High, the Mashiach, Yahweh Shah. Check that out. So what are you going to be? You're going to be a vessel unto honor or to dishonor? You're going to purge yourself and be a vessel of gold or silver, or you're going to be a vessel of wood and stone? All right. Um, I mean, wood and earth. Right? Because, like it tells you, gold is tried in the fire. If you put wood in fire, what happens? It burns up. Right, if you, uh, 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 earth, you know what I'm saying? You're basically not that vessel of gold and silver. You're not that vessel that's impenetrable. Impenetrable. This is like your, uh, tongue tied, right? So, um, you gotta purge yourself so that you can be, that's another level, layer, and dynamic of purging. You gotta purge yourself. So that what? You can be a vessel unto honor and you can be used by the Most High. The Most High can't use you if you're not purged. He can't use you as a, a, a vessel of righteousness. All right. Um, let me get one more. One more on purging. Ezekiel 20 and 38. Let's go to Ezekiel 20 and 38. Ezekiel 20 and 38. Um, yeah, Ezekiel 20 and 38. Now, this is when I'm going to start at 35 so we can get the understanding. This is when Israel is delivered out of captivity and we're brought back into the wilderness, right? Like we were when we came out of Egypt for the Most High to prove us. Remember when we was in the wilderness in the ancient time, the Most High had to prove us, all right? Um, this is um, Ezekiel 20 and 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith Yahweh, our power. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know I am the Lord. So guess what? When we come out of bondage and captivity, guess what's going to happen? When we come out of bondage and captivity, we going into the wilderness for the most high to plead with us again. And what he going to do? He going to purge us like he did when we came out of the first Egypt.
Because America is the second Egypt or the spiritual Egypt. So the Most High going to bring us out. Right? And what's going to happen? When the Most High bring us out, he going to purge us. A lot of people not going into the land like before. He going to purge us as a people before we get into the kingdom. There's going to be some examples. Even after we get out of here and we're delivered, there's going to be some examples in the wilderness again that's not going into the land. They're going to be purged out in the wilderness. Then we're going into the land of Israel as a cleansed, completely cleansed and righteous and purged nation. That's another level, dynamic, and layer of the purging. So as we purge it for the Passover, let us purge in every dynamic and level and layer of purging that the Most High want us to purge in. Everybody understand? Give me a con triple seven. Salakia. All right. Any questions or comments? Let me... My goddamn letter fell off. I'm just put this headband together. Any questions or comments? I'll give y'all a second. I'll give y'all a second for any questions or comments. Any questions or comments? I'll give y'all a second. So, those of y'all that would like to, spread the word too. I'm a... I'm a um, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make a couple of announcements. I'm gonna probably make a couple of more announcements. And um, um, we're not dealing with Iran and Israel right now. We're dealing with the um, Passover purge. Um, Passover purge fast. Um, uh, brother Nordington, friend. I don't even know why you're asking that question. We already we already spoke about that. Uh. You saying, I thought Passover started on the 10th, Elder. I don't know where you get that from. And we just talked earlier. You just asked me earlier, when does the Passover start? I said, for HOI's calendar, it starts on um, April 21st at even. Sunday, April 21st at even. So I don't know why you're coming back now saying, I thought Passover started on the 10th, Elder. I don't know where you're getting that from. You thought, where did you think that from? I don't know where you got that from, brother. Not according to HRI's calendar. All right, I don't, brother, I don't know how, I don't know for how for you to be right. How did you think the Passover started on the 10th? Who do you follow? What elders and camp do you follow calendar? That's all you got to go by. If the Passover started for another camp on the 10th, then go by that calendar. All right? I'm not, I'm not here to say if you're right or wrong because a lot of camps got different dates. According to their research and calculations, there's different dates. And we keep telling y'all every year, don't get sidetracked by that. Go by the elders and camps that y'all follow. It's not hard. Every year we got to go through this. You know, and we love y'all, but you know, <laughs> we got to give y'all tough love sometimes. We know a lot of y'all want to be careful. You want to be, but remember the most high is a merciful power. If, he, if you get something wrong, or even if you think you got it wrong, the most high is merciful. He know you didn't mean to do it on purpose. So stop being so scary, y'all. I, I just want to make sure I'm right. We, we understand that, but just the most high is merciful. Um, no, so Brother Northington, even if you're not in a camp, again, whatever elders and leaders that you follow, go by that calendar. That's all we can tell you, or do your own research and whatever the Spirit show you to follow. But I'm not here to tell you HOI is right. That's our research, how we... We calculate the feast days from the dark moon. That's the date we came up with. So let's say I'm not in the camp, but I follow the TSK camp. Okay, the elders and leaders of TSK, whatever calendar they have, 
That's what you follow. Don't look at all the other camps. Because you're going to get confused and you're going to get scary and say, I'm not doing it the right day. You're going to have a thousand different dates out here. Follow the elders and leaders that you're privy to and go by the calendar that they teach. All right, that's it. Um, would there be any traveling issues with moving around state to state carrying a staff? There shouldn't be. No, there shouldn't be. If, if you're driving, no. Um, if you're taking a plane, you can just tell them it's religious. And um, they might make you check it in or they might let you bring it on a plane. Um, it depends. You got to tell them and just tell them it's religious, though. All right, just tell them it's religious. Um, but yeah, when it, I'm a stickler for that, Israel. When it comes to the dates, just just follow to the best of your ability. Follow the elders that you follow. Um, any other questions or comments? Yeah, if you're driving with a staff, Josh, that if you're driving, that's you know that's a no-brainer. It'll be in your car. Uh, on a plane. Um, like I said, yeah, you just got to tell them it's religious, that's all. And you should be fine. If not, wherever you're going, then tell the brothers there to have your extra staff. If you, if you don't feel like traveling. I don't travel with my staffs like that. I don't, I don't like to carry it on a plane, whatever. I just have a staff wherever I'm going. Um, you know, if it's one of the states I live in, I, I'll have staffs there already. Or if I'm traveling somewhere for the Passover, I'll, I'll ask a brother there to... Hey, give me an extra staff. Right. Um, anybody else? All right, so let's go to uh, Esther. Esther 4. Yeah. Yeah, you could say uh, it's a walking stick, a cane, or is uh, it's religious. Um, yeah, your uh, daughter, you're right. Esther 4 and 16. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and Fashi for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. My point being, a, fa a complete dry fast is no food or drink. Son up. To sundown. I mean a sundown to sundown. Esther and Israel did it for three days. So that they can be delivered from. The uh, the Persians. The uh, the Persians and the heathens. That want to exterminate them. But. A fat, this is a complete dry fast. Wednesday. Sundown. Like I said. Um, I'm going to announce it again. I'll probably do a, a, another video about it also. Maybe I'll go live on my. Um. I might go live on my uh, uh, YouTube before Wednesday, of course. But everybody help spread and announce it. Let's do this pre-Passover purge fast. Yeah, PPP fast. Pre-Passover purge fast. Not PPP loan, damn it. Y'all ain't getting no money. Don't say HOI is giving out PPP loans. When I can get my check, Elder, when HR, HR cutting checks? No. PPP fast. Pre-Passover purge fast 2024 to get your mind and spirit right before the Passover. Um, any more questions or comments? I'm going to get ready to wrap it up. I got to deal with my children. So I'm going to get ready to wrap it up. So like y'all, I had a little mishap on my crown, but I just put it together, so... <laughs> Salakia, no folly. Um, don't forget, again, order your 2024 High Holy Day Feast Day calendars. Order your 2024 High Holy Day Feast Day calendars. House of Israel NYC at gmail.com or inbox me here. Um, inbox me here, uh, Kanai Zabak on Facebook or Kanizabak on Instagram, order your 2024 High Holy Day Feast Day calendars. They are on discount because we four months into the year already. All right, so I'm basically giving a good deal. 
I got more. Uh, I just got another stock in, so we good. All right, don't forget. Keep your calendar, and the calendar will keep you up with the feast days if you want to follow the calendar of HOI. You know, so um, I just want to encourage y'all, if you see 10 different dates out here, go by the date that of the camp or elders or brothers you follow. If you're not in a the camp, then pick one camp and follow their calendar or do your own research and follow the days that the Most High show you. That's all I can tell you. I, I can't I can't tell y'all nothing else. I can't I can't say you're right because you're doing it this day. I'm not even gonna say that with HOI. And see, a lot of y'all don't expect that because y'all used to hearing camp say, no, that's the date, that's the right date, but we're not gonna do that here at HOI. The best way to say it is I'm not telling other camps what they should say, and they in their confidence, they that's how they say it. But to me, and that's just to me. The best way to say it is this is the date we follow according to the research that we have done and what we see to be true. Not look, HOI got the right date. All these other camps going off. They dates is off. Nah, we're not going to do that. These niggas is proud out here. All right? No disrespect. I love all my brothers, but a, a, lot, of, a lot of brothers are proud. They're doctrine proud. They're research proud. They think, every, they think their camp is right. They think the most are only dealing with them. They proud as hell. That's why certain brothers I don't deal with. I love them. They Israelites, but I don't really rock with them because they proud as hell. All right, and that's and I'm not shading any other camp. I'm not saying that, but some of these brothers need to humble themselves. They think they camp got the right way. All right, which is fine according to their research, but just humble yourself. Humble yourselves. That's right. Judges five and eleven. We rehearsing the righteous acts. Um, Colossians 2, 16, 17. This is a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Yahweh. All right? In Yahweh, shot, we're going to do it perfectly. When Rome raided Israel in 70 AD, that has nothing to do with calculating the um that has nothing to do with calculating the Passover date. The Passover date is calculated according to the new moon. All right, that's why it tells you in the Apocrypha in Ecclesiastes 46. Um, from the moon is a sign of feast because you count 14 days from the moon. Now, some some camps believe the full moon is the new moon. Some camps feel the first slither is the new moon. See, you'll drive yourself crazy. Just get one level of understanding, and that's it. Go by that. He was digging for better understanding. Uh, I don't know where. 70 AD. When Rome invaded Israel in 70 AD, it was around the 8th. But I'm not sure if they invaded, um, if the Romans invaded Israel around Passover. So where you getting that from, brother? When Rome raided Israel in 70, it was around the 8th to the 10th. Well, I mean, you know, if that's, if that's what you see, then, <laughs> then follow that, brother. Um, everybody, you know. Everybody got to work out their own soul, soul salvation with fear and trembling. All right. But, um, you know, when the Romans in when the Romans raided Jerusalem in 70 AD, even if it was around the Passover, the Passover date, um, the Passover date was, is based upon a new moon. So it's not going to be the same every year. All right, if that makes sense. That was back when the Romans invaded Jerusalem during the Passover season. But that was that year, 70 AD. That don't mean it's going to be the same. Uh, uh, uh. It's always the 14th day of the first month. 
But that doesn't mean it's going to be the 8th of, or the 10th of that day in 2024, if that makes sense. All right. Um, so that's that. Any other questions or comments? No, let's get um, one more on fasting. Let's get Matthew 6. Matthew 6. What state you in, brother uh, Northington? Um, Matthew 6, 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. So Wednesday sundown, Wednesday sundown, when you fast, you know, look fresh, wash your face, brush your teeth. I know some of y'all don't believe in brushing your teeth because you say the water goes down your mouth and it can get in the system. That's like drinking water during the fast, but the hell with that, I'm going to brush my teeth. Um... It says, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you that ye have, they have their reward. Meaning, when you fasting, you're supposed to try to look normal, as normal as possible. It's one day of abstaining from food and drink. It shouldn't kill you. You shouldn't be all weak and weary. All right? But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash they, thy face. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. All right, so when you fast, what do you do? You appear like you're normal. All right, so that's what you do. So when you um, when you fast on Wednesday at even, you know, try to look normal till till even Thursday. And pray, read some scriptures, some psalms, some scriptures on Passover, scriptures on getting your spirit right, and ask the most how to forgive you of your sins, cleanse you, and allow you to go into eating the Passover in the right and correct spirit. By Shema Mashiach Yavashai. So any questions or comments before I sign out? And like I said, um, Everybody help out, help announce it. All right, it's this Wednesday, April 17th at even, PPP pre-Passover purge fast. All right, um, like I said, I'll, I'll announce it again. I might even do another video. I might do another video um, and announce it again. And um, so, you know, Israel can be abreast of the fast coming up. All right, so spread the word, Israel, spread the word. This Wednesday, um, pre-Passover purge fast. All right, any questions or comments before we sign out? Oh, um, Brother Daniela, Daniela, if you're still on here, um, what do I think of Iran and Israel? Wars and rumors of wars. Matthew's 24, same thing. Just like uh, Hamas and Israel was bombing each other. Same thing. All right. Um, will it necessarily lead to World War III? I don't know. But it's, it's prophecy. Remember, we just had the eclipse. So eclipse, people thought the world was going in on the eclipse. There was a, a, a guy, that so-called Israelite leader that teach that we can eat pork and shrimp. He said we got nine days from Easter, which would have been the eclipse. Hell, I was hoping he was right. But... The eclipse was a sign of destruction to come. So after the eclipse, what happened? A week before the Passover, the Lord is allowing the land of Israel to get bombed by the Iranians. Prophecy, judgment, signs. That's what we think about Iran and Israel. What we always been thinking. Matthew 24 and 7. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All right. Um... But the end is not yet. These are the beginning of sorrows, but these, the end is not yet. We still got more prophecy uh, to witness. But that's my thoughts on Iran and Israel. Good old wars and rumors of wars.
Um, can you touch on the second exodus and what that might look like during the time of Jacob's trouble? No, I cannot really, brother, because the scriptures say eyes have not seen. All we know is what the scriptures say. The second exodus is Israel being delivered on the chariots. Yahweh shot coming. He's going to destroy the nations. Nuclear war going to be happening at the same time. And we're going to be um, lifted up on the chariots. And as we lift it up on the chariots, we're going to see America and certain parts of the world being destroyed by nuclear fire and war and, and World War III. And Yahweh shot and the angels destroying and killing. It's going to be simultaneous. All right. Jacob's trouble. They just made a movie called Civil War. Jacob's trouble is nothing but martial law and the race wars. That's it. Jacob's trouble is martial law and the race wars. That's Revelation 12 and 12. The devil is going to come down having great wrath because he know he have a short time. What it's actually going to look like, we can't even imagine. The scriptures say, Daniel 12 said, there's going to be a time of trouble on the earth that is going to be so bad, it's going to be the worst time in the history of the existence of the planet earth. Daniel 12 and 1. So I can tell you it's going to be race wars, bloodshed, concentration camps, starvation, famine, economic deprivation. People are going to be starving, fighting, killing. But to actually see, know what it's going to be like, that's on a whole other level. We ain't going to know. Um, we ain't going to know. <laughs> We, I mean, we can't even imagine. It's going to be worse than... It's, what our wildest imagination about it is probably going to be a hundred times worse than that. Uh, Daniel, read Daniel 12 and 1. It's going to be a time of trouble that man has never seen on the existence of the earth. The worst time in the history of the world. And, and when it, it means running from city to city, it, that's exactly what it means. Meaning, the scriptures say we're going to be like pilgrims in that day. If you have the ability to flee from one city where there's trouble and make it somewhere that may be a little bit safer, then do that if you have the ability. If not, you got to just stay where you at and ask the most how to deliver you. All right. When COVID came, you could travel, but they was they was advising you not to. They were saying you really should stay put. And when COVID came, people what? You was locked in your house. But the most I had it to where you can go to the store you, they said only go out for essentials. And they didn't keep people in the house. They just suggested that you don't come out. And because the white man said it in his news, everybody listened. All right? But if you can flee, I mean, in second answers, it said we're going to be like pilgrims in that day. If you can flee to another city to avoid persecution, then do that. That's what it's talking about. But you better have faith that the most I going to protect you wherever you at. All right, any more questions or comments? Any more questions or comments? So uh, I'm going to sign out with that. So like, uh, like I said, I got to go deal with my children. Uh, repent, keep the commandments. Happy Passover, happy new brew year. Happy new brew year, happy Passover 2024. All praise to you. How about Shema Mashiach, Um... Do your fast this week, your purge, pre-Passover purge fast. Wednesday, um, Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, at even. All right, at even. Fast from even Wednesday to even um, Thursday. Repent and ask the most how to cleanse your mind, your spirit, and your body of sin. And keep the Passover Sunday night with a purge of uh, conscience and mind. And that's it. Any other questions or comments, we'll address them throughout the week. All right, so with that, death and destruction to Esau and the nations, power, peace, safety, and the kingdom of heaven to the 12 tribes of Israel. Kwame Ashala, we still got next. Hallelujah. Bring it out. All the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the earth. Four corners of the earth. Um... Keep the fast, spread the word, spread the word, put it on your social media, post about it, let brothers and sisters know we coming together, HOI, and as a nation, to keep this fast before the Passover. All right? Bye. Shema Mashiach, Yahushua.
So with that, again, happy new brew year. Happy Passover coming up. Everybody keep the fast. Let me know how your fast go. And um, keep the Passover next Sunday coming up. If you come into Philly, if you come into Philly to keep the Passover with HOI, get your fees in, get your travel arrangements, any last minute questions or comments. All right. Um, uh, hit us up. House of Israel NYC at gmail.com. Hit me up here on Facebook, wherever you can reach me. If you got my number, Instagram, whatever, wherever you can reach me for questions. I'll try to get, I'm going to have a busy week, but I'll try to get to you uh, uh, if I can. If I don't, it's not on purpose. It was because I was just so busy caught up with this Passover, last minute Passover uh, preparation. All right, so with that, I'm going to sign off. Please sabak, H-O-I to them chariots fly. All praises to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Amen. All the camps in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai throughout the four corners of the earth. Call me Ashala. We still got next. Hallelujah. Bring it out. H O I pull up, boys. H O I to the chariots fly. All praises to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai forever and ever. Amen. Happy pre purge, pre Passover purge fast, and happy Passover. Call me Ashala. Shalom. Come. Come, shall